Introducing the SJ3219 electric scissor lift. The Skyjack SJ3219 is a self-propelled compact electric scissor lift with a working height of 7.8 meters and a deck capacity of 227 kilograms. It's the ideal choice for a wide range of indoor and outdoor working at height applications. The 24 volt DC system uses four 6 volt 220 amp hour deep cycle batteries to provide smooth, quiet operation with zero emissions and more than enough power for a full working day. With an overall weight of 1,312 kilograms, the SJ3219 is the lightest in its class. Wide, non-marking tyres reduce ground pressure and protect finished surfaces. And the rollout 0.9 metre deck extension increases the available workspace and provides that all-important up and over capability. The upper control box features a proportional joystick with a safety enable trigger, thumb steer, function selector switches, battery level gauge, horn and an emergency stop. Lower controls include a lift and lower function, a further emergency stop, a key ignition switch and a main power switch, which can be locked to prevent unauthorised use. 90 degree steering provides excellent manoeuvrability and the narrow width, together with hinged rails, allows the unit to pass easily through standard internal doorways. When elevating, pothole protection bars automatically deploy and drive slows to a creep speed for safety. When lowering, the platform will automatically stop and around two metres above the ground, an alarm will sound. Before continuing, the control must be released and checks made to ensure no person is near the scissor. The SJ3219 is also equipped with a tilt sensor, which halts the lift and drive functions if the maximum slope is exceeded when elevated, and a platform load measurement system, which prevents overloading. All components are located inside swing-out compartments, making them readily accessible for routine maintenance, for example, when checking battery levels. The battery charger, located at the rear of the machine, automatically adjusts to suit the power supply and when the batteries are at full capacity, switches off to save power. Integral AC wiring with applicable connections is also provided in the platform to eliminate trailing wires when operators are using externally powered electrical equipment, such as power tools. In event of a power loss, the platform can be manually lowered using the emergency controls by turning the hold valve override knob located on the end of the lift cylinder and then pulling the lower valve on the side of the unit. If the unit also needs to be moved and is on level ground, turn the front mounted free wheeling valve. Then depress the brake release knob and then push the hand pump. Once resistance is felt, the brakes are released. Before working at height, you need to develop a risk assessment and method statement to ensure you understand the task ahead and select the right piece of equipment and the most appropriate PPE for the job. You also need to undertake a visual and functional pre-start inspection before you use the lift and when operating it, you must also be aware of the surroundings and check for drop-offs, holes, overhead obstructions, electrical conductors and any other possible hazards or obstructions. If you're in any doubt, consult the operator's manual or ask your supervisor. Remember, all operators must have successfully completed a MUP training course, such as IPATH Category 3A certification, and be familiar with controls and safety systems. And finally, a couple of safety reminders. If possible, always avoid working at height, manual handling and exposure to vibration and dust. Make sure you select the right equipment and consumables for your chosen job by considering the task, the material you're working on, and the situation you're in. Ensure that users of the equipment are confident and competent, and that the tools themselves are in good working order. Pay extra attention to plugs, leads, casings, bits, and blades. Make sure the equipment is within its safety check dates, and assess all of the possible risks, including exposure to handarm vibration, dust, falling from height, manual handling, and noise. And of course, always use the correct PPE and follow any site-specific instructions. If you're ever in doubt, always consult your supervisor.